strange soul Where untold adventures unfold Where the moon shine and the sun glow Plant seeds and see what grows Water your garden with wishes and dreams Free like a fish in the sea But listen to me Not everyone listens to dreams Some hearts are skipping a beat Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Lion's Den with Seth. I'm your host, Seth. And if this is your first time watching this on Facebook, make sure you go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook so your comments can pop up and we can get interactive. All right. This is going to be a great, great, great show. OK, get everything that you need to write something down on and with because this is going to be a show full of great information because we're getting ready to go into 2021 right we're going to say forget what 2020 was it's like a a a bad first marriage right it didn't count right but what you want to do is jump into the new year the right way and make sure your money's right but before we go into that what we normally do is get the den involved all right big herm how you feeling bro i'm good big dog how you living Man, slow motion, brother. Slow motion, man. Slow motion. What what man, you got going on? Man, it's it's been a pretty good day over here, man. Weather is good, you know. Little dreary here and there, you know. The Titans won. What more can I say, bro? Really? Yo, very. <laughs> hey, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, I'm looking forward to this chat right here, though, because you know your boy been living check to check since retirement, man. So I need to figure out how to get out that rut. You know what I'm saying? Keep, keep a little change in my pocket. Bro, I feel you. I feel you. And, and you know what? This is this is real important. But you know what? Before we get too too deep into it, I want to make sure that we do give a special shout out to our uh, to our sponsor. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, if you don't know, it's time for you to know. You need to get your credit right. All right. So we got Tracy Brown. Not only is she a literacy advocate, credit repair guru she's also a retired vet so she's an illinois-based financial uh, literacy coach and credit repair repair specialist right she doesn't shy away from the notion that she's adopted to keep to her keen passion to getting your credit right so i advise you give her a call her number is 618-560-3680 Eight seven. Look, when it comes to the importance of credit repair, chances are Tracy Brown will routinely, okay, routinely keep it uh, eight hundred and fifty. You dig it? So it ain't about a hundred. It's eight hundred and fifty. So make sure y'all give her a call, y'all. Our number six one eight five six zero three six eight seven. So yes, it is important. Get your credit right. But um, yo. Big Larry, what's going on, man? Hey, 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 hey. What's up, fam? How y'all doing? How y'all living on this wonderful Sunday night? Man, slow motion, bro. Slow that's motion. right. That's right, man. It's been good. I can't complain. You know, I appreciate, you know, don't forget what we did yesterday as far as the homeless thing go, man. That was a, a good look from the Lions Den Pride and what we did, raising that money and, and, and giving folks. is what so, we did to the shelter, y'all. So go ahead. Tell, tell them a little bit about what, what happened, man. Yeah, so you know, you know, we raised some funds over seven hundred dollars uh, that we uh, raised for giving fifty meals, masks, water, you know, and socks to the homeless in the local area in the city of St. Louis. And uh, with the pride and uh, the folks tuning into the show, we were able to not only meet our goals, but we exceeded it. And we did what we said we was going to do: get all what, what, we, what was needed. And we went out yesterday, and uh, we handed it out to to the show, the Gateway One Eighty in, in the city of St. Louis. Man, I can't tell y'all the look on their faces when I walked in there. And, yeah. and, and we made that phone call and we walked in and, and brought all them bags of food. Mm-hmm. Uh, they was just overwhelmed and they were appreciative. And I know somebody yesterday, at least at least for one day, had uh, a meal that they wasn't expecting. If y'all know Yo. what I mean. I mean, a hot, good meal, too. Good meal. Yeah. Yeah. is the stuff. Yes, yes. So shout out to Kevlar's Grill and shout out to everybody that watched and donated. Look, another round of applause for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because real talk, what's the point of having this platform talking mess behind the mic if we can't get in front of the mic and do something, you dig? So, and it's individuals out there that need things for real. And if we're in a position to make that change, let's be the change you want to see. But the first first thank you on that, though, man, is to you listeners, man, straight on. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Because it was a team effort, but we, we, we we wouldn't be able to do it without you guys. So thank you guys for believing in us and helping us get that together. You know, yes, it's a team effort. Yeah, always, always. All right, Larry. Look, brother, 
I'm gonna let you introduce our guest, man. All right, without further ado, we got two good guests for you guys, some people that's in the industry, the financial industry, because as we said, my, the money talk, right? It's the name, it's the name of this, this show today, no, the money game, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, we got Mr. Ronnell and Mr. Dormon of the Six Figure Ambition uh, uh, Company, so to speak. I guess company, right? It's not a corporation, so it's a company. We got them on to bring their expertise and their experience to talk to you guys about financial literacy, literacy with the emphasis on building generational wealth. So welcome you two guys. Welcome to yes. the show. Welcome to the yes. end. Welcome. welcome y'all. Hey, so look real quick, ladies and gentlemen, make sure, make sure you're sharing this. Share, share, share. And we appreciate y'all what's going on, Crystal. Everybody else, make sure that y'all comment and ask these gentlemen some questions because it's not often we get some millionaires and close to them <laughs> as me myself I, I consider myself a hundred there you dig so I, I i own that but we're really trying to take it up a level this is the time to tune in so without further ado what's going on brother so look uh ronnell why don't you introduce yourself brother uh my name is ronnell burns and uh, i'm the founder of six figure ambition uh been uh, in business with this uh, division for about five years and uh our total mission is to help create more six figure income earners in our community that anybody has ever done. And so uh, over the last two years, we've uh, uh, promoted six people. Their income is over six figure. Uh, their annual income is over six figures and also now moving towards uh, uh, six and seven figures in, in investment accounts. So we, we talk about it from two standpoints with our mission statement is to create more six figure earners than anybody's ever done on annual, but then also build a portfolio where you got six figures and they're moving towards seven. So uh, it's a little bit about myself. Oh, wow. Y'all listen, hey, I don't know if y'all heard that, brother. So I'm going to make sure y'all rewind this and replay this because he just gave you a whole bunch of info that's going to slap you. You dig? Hey, Darman, how about you, brother? How, how you feel? How did you get involved with this? Well, I mean, the opportunity came to me actually by right now, May of 2019, and I was already in the legal field. Uh, had a six-figure income, over 350000 a year was my average. But he showed me a concept that actually made sense to me. Uh, one of the things that I learned early on in business is, you know, to become financially independent, you have to find a way to make money that don't require your time or touch. So I uh, brought the opportunity to me. It made sense. I hopped in this deal May 16th of 2019. The sky's been the limit. Okay. Shoot. Mm -hmm. Hit it, Herm. So you mean to tell me um, you're not getting paid by the hour no more? <laughs> is, that what, is that what you just said? It's actually about a minute now, Herm. <laughs> the hell I'm talking about. Hey, so first question, I'm going to kick it off like this. Um, the last the last week, man, my Facebook page was filled with Gucci Man versus uh <laughs> Jeezy, right? It was filled with that stuff. I don't know if y'all watched it, right? And then Gucci Man at one point said, "Let's have a jewelry challenge," and and my man Jeezy responded with, "Let's have a who owns the most real estate challenge." Um, to me, you know, what I'm saying what Gucci said, right? When he said, "Let's have a jewelry challenge," people thought that was flossing and being a boss. But Jeezy hit him with something that we really don't think about, you know, in our community. Can y'all speak on that? And what does that that phrase mean to you? Um, it means everything. Uh, number one is because jewelry and all that stuff. I mean, that's that's flashy. It looks good. And it could probably get you a hot date. Right. And probably get you a hot date and some dabs with your homies. Uh, but 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 that's not that's not a stance for generational wealth um, in that mindset. So I can I can I can brag to you about something that makes me look good. But or I can brag, brag to you about something that creates generational wealth. See, when he responded that way, when he's dead and gone, somebody's going to pawn the jewelry. But see, if he got investment properties and things like that, the kids, the family that depend on his income. Right. They still live on. They still have the same quality of life because he's generational wealth thinking. He allowed his gift to make room for him so they can have long term success. We see a lot of people that have success in the NFL, in a rap game, things like that. But after their career is over, guess what happens to most of those athletes? What happens to most of those entertainers? They're broke. They have nothing because they never start building wealth. So your gift is supposed to make room for you and then put your amongst great people. So he looked like, and sounds like he's doing the right thing. I, I seen all that over the Facebook and, and somebody thought I was playing. I put on my pet said, am I the only one that don't know who Jeezy or what other guy name is? Uh, I, I don't know who they are. Hold on, man, Le Fleur, man. Oh, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, let me see it. Gucci Mane. Gucci Mane, okay, so I might know who they were. Somebody like, you joking, like, no. Then my wife said, you don't know who they are, but you probably heard one of their songs. Well, my car isn't for entertainment. My car is actually my library. My car is for, for not entertaining, it's to educate me because Gucci Mane and whoever the other guy name is, they already wealthy, they already rich. 
I ain't gonna get rich by sitting up listening to them all day. No knock, you gotta entertain yourself. But the but the thing I like about that guy is he talked about not what he can heap on himself and jewelry. He responded with generation. When you dead and gone, the only thing that matters is your legacy. That's you don't need much of a legacy. Woo. Yo, hold on. Listen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ho hopefully, <laughs> you know what, Earn. Look, damn you, man, because you did this on purpose, but I appreciate it because, yo, we got issues. All right. And when I mean we, I mean individuals that's that's thinking on lower levels of things. But ladies and gentlemen, please share this, share this, because it's time for us to wake up. You dig? You either yeah. reading off the menu or you on the menu right on. Hey, Darman, what you got, brother, uh, to his point? Man, I mean, it's it's pretty much the same way. I view it the same way Ronell did. See, I was the guy that had the big rims, the beats, you know, the uh, the jewelry, the, you know, the watches, the diamond necklaces, the diamond, the, the, the glasses, and you know, I had all that stuff. But I had nothing but a savings account, right? I, I put my money into Commerce Bank savings account, and when I went there a year, two years down the road, whatever I put in the account, it looked the same. I never knew what a mutual fund was. I never knew what an annuity was. I never knew what uh, 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 in, investing in stock was. I never knew anything about that because all I knew was savings account and worrying my money, right? I didn't have anything significant in a savings account because everything was on my car. Everything was on my neck, right? <laughs> so, so, so now the difference is when I die, what happens to the jury? As he stated, they're going to pawn the jury, right? Somebody going to drive a car. They're not going to treat it like you treated it. So now what do you do in a position to where when you transition, the people that depended on you, they benefit off the fruits of your labor. That's actually what six figure ambition has taught me. They're, listen, there's life beyond death. You're putting all this money into a checking account. You're putting all this money into a savings account or you're putting this money on your neck and you transition and you just sit where you used to sit when you was living. So that was a uh, it, it kind of hit home when he said it. I, I, I just looked at the, uh, the 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 mental maturity and a lot of people think the same way. A lot of people, you got a lot of likes, a lot of thumbs up, a lot of hearts. When he said, let's have a jury challenge, I said, the hell are we challenging jury for? <laughs> right? It just kind of threw me off. So yeah, man. So, so I have the same mindset, man. And, and believe it or not, my mind was a little different 19 months ago. I thought how he thought, but I was unlearned. So yeah, same deal. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And, and so my question is, it's, it's not in relation to that, but it will build upon what he just said about that, because I want to talk about this young generation. Now, maybe not just young, but our generation, too. You know, we think we I ain't gonna say we think we put a lot of clout into our status. You know, the cars we drive, the bags we got, the houses, you know, and then you think it's somebody that's really out there like, uh, I don't know, you know, the guy that owns Microsoft and you wouldn't even tell him from a can of paint when you see him out in public. You know, because our image is we real flashy. We, everything around us is about what's on us and what we're driving in. But when we're talking about building that generational wealth piece, can you guys speak on the education piece? Because we're missing that, you know, and I think I and I, I like I, I got young teenage, a young teenage son and kids that, that think that this is the life. You know, I'm nobody until I show that I got this clout around my neck and the cars I drive. But that's not the case. So can we talk about the educational piece of building this generational wealth where it's not so much flashy, but it's what's behind the scenes that you got to pass on to your folks? Right. I think two things. Number one, uh, first off, I think because of the generation that that uh, that that uh, that's up and coming now. See, they see that on TV. They see the GZs and the uh, Alan, Alan Iverson. They see all these guys and they come with flash. So I think it's twofold. Number one, I'm very flashy. Let me let me say this. I'm very flashy. Like my wife drives a Maserati. I bought it for Mother's Day. I'm not against that. I drive the brand new Lincoln Navigator. These are $200,000 vehicles, right? And I live on a 46th floor of Lakeshore Drive. I, my, my, my penthouse is 10 grand a month. But oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. on. So, no. Nah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but my point is this if we want to reach those children, we're competing against Jeezy. True. So he has the ear, we don't. So, so a lot of what I drive and where I live and things like that is to, it's, a, it's, a, it's an attraction feature. They're not going to listen to the guy who pulls up in a Toyota because you, you're not what he what he's you're not impressive to him. So before you can get their ear, you got to first grasp their attention. So so the buyer says the winner Rome, you have to become a Roman. Does that make sense? So so I'm not against the flashy stuff, but my relevance, I'll pull up my mutual fund statement and I'll show you what's in that. 
See, see, I, well, I can have a conversation with you because I drive up in a Maserati. But here's the difference. I don't pay for my Maserati. My mutual fund pays for my Maserati because the return on my investment outweighs what that car note is. See, my mutual fund, think about this. If I got a mutual fund, and let's just say, hypothetically, I got a uh, million dollars in there. And my mutual fund, the one I actually got average 17%, but let's just say 10 for the sake of numbers. Well, what's 10% of a million? It's $100,000. So, so the, the interest on 10% on my mutual fund pays me $100,000 a year. And mind you, mine's almost double that. So it'll be $200,000 a year that support my lifestyle. So, so, so if I want to drive a Maserati, right? if I want to drive a Lincoln truck, it doesn't really matter what I drive. I like nice things. I got told somebody the other day, I said, well, what, you know, DeMar drives a, the brand new Range Rover. It's $160,000 car, so we all look flashy. And so somebody said, well, why you need that kind of car? You can just get you this, you get that. I said, if the car you're talking about, they talk about an Audi or something like that, if that flips over five times on the highway, <laughs> your chances of living is better in the $150,000 Range Rover. However, why would you drive around in a $150,000 Range Rover and you don't have $150,000 in your investment account? That's the question that we ask. So it's nothing wrong with having nice things, nothing wrong with looking good, but also make sure you got substance. Because at the end of the day, when you when when, when the car, when you go on the car going too, unless you got something to help sustain the car. Good and point. this you position yourself investment-wise where you don't have to actually pay for it. Well, I read a book a long time ago, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. And talking mm -hmm. about that your assets pays for your liability. That's right, coach. Not your wages. Not the money on your job. That ain't what should be paying for your Maseratis and all that kind of stuff. That what you pay for it is the is what your money is causing to be made without your effort. That's what a wealthy people mindset is. Even if I don't go to work today, I posted on Facebook today. If I if I cannot make a dime for the next five years, I won't lose my house. I won't lose my cars. I won't lose it because we established wealth. Okay. Our money now works for us. We don't work for money. Our money now works for us. Our business now works for us. I didn't work in two weeks, but my bank account just don't know it because we set things in place where your money don't, as the mindset, it doesn't require your time and it doesn't require your touch. And that's what most poor people don't understand. Everybody get the same 24 hours in a day. Everybody. So we all get the same 24 hours in a day. Let me ask you this, Seth. If we all get the same 24 hours in a day, why are the wealthy people wealthy and the broke people, and the broke people broke? We all get the same it, no, but it's a mindset. So, hey, that's what it is. Darmon, what you think about that? I mean, I'm with I'm with Ronnell on it. You know, the uh, the, the the mind. I always say this to, uh, you know, we was talking about, you know, how we just see people walking around throughout the day. I remember I was a kid and uh, younger teenager, you know, late, early, early 20s. and I was going to work and I'm like, wow, how is everybody walking up and down the street? Well, they live a life that you they live because you live the life that you live. So we look at the Ray Kroc mentality. Ray Kroc didn't open McDonald's to flip burgers. He opened it to be paid when burgers are flipped. And I looked at that from a standpoint of I, when I when I got my business, listen, I said, hey, I made it right. Coming from where I come from, 350,000 a year on average. Hell, you made it. You made it out the hood. But I still was showing up. I was still under the shackles. I didn't understand how to generate income that didn't require my personality, my time and my touch. See, I was saying being self-employed, I was a business owner. No, I bought a good job. Now we're paid off of a system that paid us. He ain't worked in two weeks. I ain't worked in a week and a half. But the checking account is confused because it don't realize that I'm absent from it. I want the Ray Kroc mentality. I want to build a business where it's paid off of systems. And I mean, you're paid off of a system and you can imp import people into the system and to generate income. That's just the mindset that we have. I mean, I just I just look at life a lot different. Uh, but but as I stated, I didn't have this mindset once upon a time. This is something that I was trained to develop and taught. And most people are just unlearning that category. These conversations set are not interested. The most most people aren't interested in hearing these conversations. No, 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 they're not. And you know what? It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that they're not. But to your point, and actually to Larry's point as well, you know, individuals gravitate to that flash and you almost have to have that to, you know, just get the eye. Right. Because individuals are moved by either what they hear or what they see. And I remember growing up, too, as well. Hey, my hero wasn't a uh, financial advisor. You know, we want to be real in Detroit. I had a couple of heroes that was looking nice. You feel me? And I mean, they, they didn't know, they didn't have a bank account, right? Their pockets was their bank accounts, or their young ladies was their bank account. If you pick up what I'm talking about, so 
Now we have to be able to have these conversations, but to where the lower, you know, like, like where the goats can get it. Right. Because sometimes we can be so up there and out there we miss the common folk. And then we turn back and look around like, okay, why they're not picking up what I'm putting down. You see what I'm saying? It's not really in their reach. So my question is, how do you connect with the community? All right, right now, I'm going to give you that. How do you connect with the community? Well, I think the platform number one that we're on right now is social media, right? And so it's a bit, like I said, you got to attract yourself, right? Uh, on social media, I'm, I put out there, me, me and my wife in front of our cars or in our penthouse and things like that, because people are like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And once you get their attention, now you start talking and speaking their language. So going live, telling your testimonies and, 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 and where you came from. I'm from the projects. Right. Gangs and drugs. I've been shot three times and all that. Went to Vashon High School and all I got is a college, uh, not a college, but a high school diploma. Didn't go to college, not going. But if a guy on Facebook can see me on there with nice things and a life lifestyle, he wants to know how did I get it? I'm now get a chance to talk to him about a way to get it that had not been introduced to us. See, I grew up selling drugs and in gangs. Well, how did I get introduced to that? Because everybody in my neighborhood who had what I wanted, that's what they did to get it. So why? First off, they attracted me. The rims, the jewelry. Oh, I like that. Now, now you can see a man in a business suit. Now you can see a man that walks into an office building that don't know how to dunk a basketball and don't know how to sell or don't sell drugs no more. Right. But he's now still having a life of, of, of relevance and success in their eyes. So I had to appeal to them. And once I appeal to them, then I have to start speaking their language. Right. I'm not the guy that's going to give you with these fancy big words. Reason number one is I don't know any. I went to Bashar and couldn't wait to get up out there. But reason number two is listen, they can't identify with that. So. So, again, it's, it's about it's about being attractive to them and going down and speaking their language. Right. You got to kind of know how they talk, how they sound and what they're looking for. And then when they do, you teach you slide in the concept. Hey, have you ever heard about this rule of 72? And most like what rule of who? I say, wait, how you double your money legally? Anybody ever told you about that? And most say no, they never heard of the rule of 72. Most mm -hmm. people, they've been through college and graduated and never heard of the rule of 72, but it's what the banks, the credit unions, and the insurance companies use to determine when your money gonna double. And nobody knows about this. See, we get to slide that in because they're attracted to the car, they're attracted to the rims. Have you heard, man, listen, let me tell you how I position myself to get this Maserati. We learned a simple concept about how to double our money legally. Man, if I could teach you how to double your money legally, would that appeal to you? The only answer to that is yes, but he's only sitting there talking to me, the young guys, because I pull up in a Maserati. Now I can have some dialogue. Man, you ain't got to live this life. I got shot three times doing what you're doing or hanging around who the type of people you hang hanging around. It caused me to almost die. My buddy beside me did die that night. I was shot three times and my buddy died because this was the element that we came up in. And now, after almost losing my life, after seeing my buddy die next to me, now I learned. I wish somebody had told me when I was your age. That I could legally double my money. I probably would have done that. How many fathers and grandfathers and brothers will we still have on earth if somebody showed us a legal way to double our money? Man, that's How it. Have we lost because they wanted a way to go have a certain quality of life for themselves. They didn't want to grow up and just be murdered. They wanted a quality of life. They was out hustling for a quality of life. I didn't want to, I didn't grow up want to be a drug dealer. I wanted, I was attracted to a quality of life. So you know what? Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something out there. I'm gonna push back just a little bit. Just a little bit. Now, let's be real, because I know the lifestyle that you're talking about. But do individuals want to do that? No. But when it's pushed as though it's an option, that's when individuals gravitate to. Right. Because it's the least path of resistance. So, mm -hmm. no, I don't think individuals wake up in the morning and say, yo, I want to go and uh, push this weight. But what they do is they see the. Uh, the abundance of it and they see that quickness so no one is taking the time to come down to where they're at and say yo check this out now this is the rule of 72 hey um but ronnell what you think bro i mean not ronnell uh darman what you think i think that it's it's a uh, i think it's something that people as he stated they gravitate to it you know is when, when when you see what you see you just know what you know right you 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 uh Coming from, I grew up in the projects as well. And as Ronnell stated, we come from the, actually the same projects, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but looking at it, looking at the people that grew up with me, the people that I looked up to, that's the lifestyle that they live. Uh, and a lot of us think that that's the ticket out. And when you go in, and I didn't choose the route. I didn't choose the route of selling drugs. Okay, I tried sports. Uh, and then I tried to get into, uh, looking into from a career standpoint, 
I dove into something that was foreign that most of the people that I grew up with, the legal field, nobody in my community was on that side of the legal field. They was on the other side. They was looking for attorneys to put them out of the situation that they was put in. So I took a different avenue. But even with taking that avenue, I created a decent lifestyle for myself, but I still understood what I understood. I didn't understand much more than what I came from. I didn't have somebody to teach me where to invest my money. I didn't have somebody to teach me, uh, uh, you know, how to position myself to build a legacy for people outside of myself. I just learned how to go out and make a living. So I think you're just uh, the the attraction, the attractive piece of it is giving them people the opportunity to say, I never had a shot. Right. Mm-hmm. I was the guy that said, I never had a shot. We just believe in going out to give everybody that equal opportunity to say, listen, you don't have to choose this lifestyle. You're only going off of what you know. So we just, I mean, the vision is to give a different roadmap, you know, for different, uh, for everyone. I can dig that. I can dig that. That makes sense. No doubt. It's a question for you guys. Um, David Ramsey talked about the seven baby steps and the importance of eliminating debt when it comes to building wealth. What are your guys' opinions on that? Is it important to, to eliminate the debt that you have first before you start trying to build on build on wealth, or should you just go for the wealth as first first? Well, I think I think I think it's a twofold question. Uh, uh, number one, I, I I do believe that debt and in certain degrees, debt's gonna always be with you. So, like, I'm not a guy that's totally debt free. All right, I got a car note on the Maserati, a car note on the Lincoln truck, and each one of those car notes is seven hundred dollars or more per month. Right now, here's how I look at it: I can take. And a hundred thousand dollars to pay for the Maserati. I could take a hundred grand and pay for the Lincoln truck, but my Maserati and my Lincoln truck are both depreciating assets. Mm-hmm. The value of those cars go down every time I turn the key over, right? So the value goes down. So it's got two hundred thousand dollars bigger. Now I could take them a hundred thousand dollars of my money, and now I don't pay any interest on it. And, but I but I got two hundred thousand dollars that I could have been gaining interest on that's now sitting up in the car dealership. They already wealthy. I go, I, I take my two hundred thousand dollars and hand it to the Maserati dealer. They got two hundred thousand dollars now. I'd rather take my two hundred thousand and put it in my mutual fund that averages seventeen percent return. Now I'm getting a seventeen percent return on that two hundred thousand. If I send it to the Maserati dealer because I want to drive a nice car, I can't get that seventeen percent return. Maserati's only charging me four percent. So am I losing money? No. I would only. I would. I would pay. Maserati four percent on a hundred thousand dollar vehicle. If I could take that same hundred thousand to keep it in my investment account and gain seventeen, I'm up by thirteen percent on that hundred thousand. But if we don't understand these concepts, we'll say, "Oh, let's just go be debt free." No, I'm going to have a vehicle anyway, and I'm going to have a nice one. So why not use their money mm-hmm. at four percent and allow the 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 the, the, the let the global economy to use my money and pay me seventeen? I'm up. Do I believe in having overwhelming debt? No, the only debt, honestly, me and my wife have car notes. That's it. <laughs> car notes and, and mortgages. That's it. We don't have that. But even on my mortgage, I'm not going to sit up and pay. I can I can pay the house off. Why would I pay the house off when my interest rate is 6%? I can take keep the same $300,000, $400,000 and put it in my investment account and get 17. But if you don't understand that, you think you just should take all of your cash and pay off your debt. No liquor. Oh, no, no, the rich don't think like that. They don't think like that. If I'm going to get a better return, why would I exhaust my assets? And then the opportunity comes up where now I can get this, this apartment building with 50 units and all they want is 400000 Wait, I just gave this guy my 400000 They need me to have $400,000 down to get the million dollar building. They want to make sure I got for not necessarily down, but they want me to have assets. If I didn't gave all my assets to the car dealership to say I'm out of debt, my portfolio is not there so they can know they're not really taking a big risk on the guy who already got a half a million dollars saved up. Mm. Wow. See, that's Yo. the game. You can no. gain 20% and spend four, or you can give them your cash and gain nothing. You choose. Good point. Good point. All right. Look, ladies and gentlemen, hey, if y'all not digging this, uh, hopefully, hopefully you're picking up these jewels. OK, we're going to take a little pause for the calls. Please make sure you share, 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 share this. We got to take some time out for our sponsors. But again, we would not be us if it wasn't for you. We will be right 
Back. Onyx Slater is a top negotiating, award-winning real estate agent in San Antonio, Texas. Her focus is on educating and empowering individuals on building generational wealth through home ownership while providing exceptional service with integrity and excellence. Although her heart is for serving first-time homeowners and the military community, her clientele ranges from $100,000 to $2.5 million. Monique has developed an awesome team that can get individuals into a home. Mention you heard this ad on the Lion's Den with Seth and get a $500 rebate from Monique at closing. After servicing in the Air Force for over 28 years, retired Chief Slater has a massive network so she can connect you with an awesome agent anywhere in the U.S. and your referral will get a special gift card from Monique. If you're in the San Antonio area or relocating there, give Monique a call first to help you find your dream home. Her number is 210-237-7268. One thing we can cherish during these times is family dinners. Think about it, the nice succulent southern fried chicken, baked beans cooked to perfection, creamy macaroni and cheese, cornbread, you get the point. Come check out Kevlar's Grill where all the meals are cooked with perfection, professionalism, and love. Located outside the Scott Air Force Base back gate inside the VFW is where you can find them. Also, they have military discount for all of our serving members. Give them a call. Their number is 618-416-5700. And that's inside Scott VFW, post 4183. And they also have Grubhub. Call them now and tell them that the Lion's Den sent you. Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Seth with the Lion's Den. Are you or someone you know looking for a tool to help them be more accountable? Check out the Black Collar Mindset, the art of strategic thinking. It's a manual to help maneuver through life strategically by holding yourself accountable every step of the way. Go to theblackcollarmindset.com to grab your copy today. Again, the website is theblackcollarmindset.com. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Let's get it together. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Lion's Den. Look, this has been a outstanding show, and this is just a halftime, right? Damn, just yeah. a halftime. Bro, like, this is some real good information, so we appreciate the love and the shares and everything because this is some good, good information on the money game, ladies and gentlemen. So take some time. Make sure that you're sharing this, and also... Go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook just so individuals can see your comments posted. We have a lot of comments up here so far, but it, this is dope. Hey, so what would you, what you, how you been feeling about this, Herm? What you think? Hey, there is one there is one person that's commenting uh, named Miss Mary on here, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She's been talking about uh, like right now she's just struggling and just trying to keep the lights on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Portfolio. I'm trying to keep these pennies together. Yeah. I can't wait to hear what the what the advisors say about comments like this because there's a lot of people that feel like they don't have the money to start investing. Like, how can they start when they can't even pay their bills? Mm -hmm. So I would like for them to advise her on how she can get started. Dope, dope, dope. All right. Yo, well, look, ladies and gentlemen, back to the den. We got Ronnell and Darma back up in the building. You know what I'm saying? Yo, hey, y'all, look, check it out. They're getting it in in St. Louis, right? They're educating individuals on financial literacy. And so we're just going to keep this ball rolling. Go ahead, Larry. What you got, bro? Absolutely. In, in keeping with this theme about this education piece, you know, you dropped some Jews there, brother, uh, Ronnie man. You, you spoke some true stuff. But I, I want to go and expand upon that because a lot of that is just lack of knowledge, lack of education, because, you know, they're not teaching this stuff in high school. And you probably ain't going to get it in college either. You know, you getting this stuff from people that's out in the field or the folks that are, you know, millionaires, billionaires that know how the game go. So I know you reach people and I know we kind of touched on this, you know, to, to grab somebody's attention, you know, especially our folks. You got to have a Maserati, got to be flashy. But for the general folks that are that are listening, like the, the young lady that he mentioned, you know, how do we spark their interest into this investment game thing? And everybody has those excuses. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Not to say they're not excuses, all right? 
I don't mean to use that word, but you know, when you're up, you're up, and when you're down, when you're down. But there's always that average, that that medium that you have. How do you speak to those folks that are not thinking when they do have that opportunity to invest and they just not eat? What yeah. is your thoughts on that? So one of the things is first off, it's about priorities, you're right? Because I, I wasn't always investing my money. Yeah, I was making a ton of money, but I wasn't investing up because I didn't have my priorities together. Uh, people find a way to do what they want to do, right? I don't know how you got a two hundred dollar cell phone, a hundred fifty dollar cell phone bill, and you can't and you can't invest. See, let me tell you one thing that I did. See, when my wife and I were struggling, right? Like, like we just we just exploded in our business over the last two three years, but we were struggling. Like we were getting lights cut off three years ago, four years ago, our lights were getting cut off. Five years ago, our cars was getting repossessed. You understand what I'm saying? That's what that was our life five years ago while we were struggling building the business, right? But even when you think about that, even in the struggles, guys, listen, you can get an investment account for as little as you can get, get involved with mutual things like that for as little as $25 a month if you want, if you chose to do that. So, one thing that I did with this cell phone, right? My cell phone bill, I, you know, because I got all my kids' iPhone, you know, how, you know how it is in this generation, and we got like seven or eight lines. Well, I was paying, I don't know, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars a month for it. And then I realized, hey, your daughter just had a baby. You're a granddaddy now. Somebody else going to probably want to go to college. Right. I got to figure out now how to put more money away into a mutual fund or an account to start saving for kids college education. So I started researching cell phone bills and I was paying twelve to thirteen hundred dollars a month and i looked around and i searched around and i got and i looked into the competitive market i found a way to get my cell phone bill down from thirteen hundred dollars a month to three hundred same amount of lines same unlimited everything but i searched around because it was important to me to position myself to invest money and now i can take that seven eight hundred dollars a month that i freed up the seven to eight hundred dollars a month that i freed up and put that into an investment account and over the next 10 years <laughs> Another couple hundred thousand dollars because I found a way. So, so if a little twenty five dollars, this is a sacrifice. Maybe it's a sacrifice for you to go put away twenty five dollars a month, but you can go find it, right? See, like, like you go drink one of these a day. That's twenty five to fifty dollars. So you you, you want to be resourceful, and you may not be able to do it every month. But the key to the game is to get started. Most people say, I, I had a wise man say before he say, you ain't got to be great to get started. You just got to get started to be great. Most people never get to the starting point. So you probably got $25 right now while you pinch a penny pension, right? If you save your money, one day your money going to save you. Let me say it again. If you save your money, one day your money going to save you. So you got to start somewhere. Even if it's just $25 a month on an automatic electronic come out of your check. See, my money come out before I get it. So I don't get a chance to decide because I know I'm undisciplined. I like to spend money. I like to live a great life and all that. So I set myself up where I don't have to get that get that that temptation. Thirty percent of my money goes into my investment account before I touch it. Then I max out my IRAs. It comes automatically out of my checking account. On the 15th, it's coming out. Ain't nothing I can do to stop it. Now I have to call my bank in advance if I'm going to have some hiccups. But because my mind is conditioned that that's coming out, it's coming out. OK. All right. So now. But coach, but coach, I like my money, but I like that security. But coach, it, it takes me time to, you know, to diversify my funds. You know, I don't why I need an allotment. I, I can't. What do you tell? No, better yet. Hold on. How about this, Darmon? Because I see you over there, brother. I see you giggling. Now, what, 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 were you there before? Like, what did it take you to get uncomfortable and then to get comfortable when it came down to this money game? Man, when you wake up in the morning and, and, and you looking at your checking account and it don't match what your check, what your bills say, right? You got your, your bills change of colors. You just got to do something different. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you said your bills change. Your, your, your bills start changing color on you. Uh, you know, you got the, the, the your letter come white and then it turned to yellow. Then the pink comes and all of a sudden it's dark. You don't know what color the bills are, right? That means they just shut everything off. You just got to do something different. And I think that what most people do is they get content, they get complacent. I always tell my kids, I say, listen, your network is in your mindset. Man, whatever you tell your mind that you're going to see, will you, you, I'm broke. That's a mindset. You don't have, you, I, I've never, even when the challenges came, I've never considered myself to be broke because broke is a mentality. You have the opportunity to wake up in the morning and do something different. See, we, 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 we look at, we look at life and, and, and we always have that. The victim mentality its always happening to me. No, that's happening to you because you choose for it to happen to you. You just got to get up and do something different. 
I looked at this set. I said, I, I remember working a job, and I tell this to my, you know, uh, to, to some of the the, the, my, the people that I mentor. I say, you know, a lot of people miss the best opportunity because they walk past it with a dollar mindset. We have that. Uh, wait, I remember wait, working that wait, 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 hold on, because see, you're talking my language, right? I, I've just adopted this whole boss thought process so now it's ringing in my head now not everybody can can dig that but hashtag ladies and gentlemen if y'all watching this right now if this making you feel good put a hashtag i can dig it hey don't mind say that again how, how do people walk around with what type of mindset with a dollar mindset or how about a wet food stamp mindset man we walk around with a mindset that you just i mean like i, I it, it bothers me uh you know when will people see opportunities and they say I think they out to get me. But see, you ain't never looked at a job that's paying you $20 an hour, but the dude that took three smoke breaks at the end of the hour made the same $20 that you made. Damn it. He took three smoke breaks. Y'all both making $20 an hour with his three smoke breaks. Y'all make the same 20 at the end of the hour. See, that's you, you choose to continue to go back. I just said, I'm not going to keep going back to the same situation that when I work 80 hours, my check $2,500 and I'm looking at the bills and they $4,500. What kind of life am I living now? Now I'm hustling backwards. So I wasn't going to be a victim of being a pimp. Ain't nothing fun about being a pimp. I wasn't going to keep on being the, being the pimp. I eventually want to become the pimp, right? I want to wake up in the morning and have other people. I want to give you the opportunity, not be the opportunist. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Too much. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all didn't make it to church today, I'm gonna need y'all to, to 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 see this plate coming around. If you can dig it, this is some real talk. How many times you gonna sit there, wake up every morning, and get pimped? Okay, to get pimped. And listen, willingly. Watch this. Hold on, oh, hold on, Darman. I, I got to get on my little soapbox. Just give me a second, right? Check it out. Listen, y'all. Y'all waking up, getting look, getting suited and booted. <laughs> listen, when on this damn clown outfit. I'm going to be a good one today. I'm going to be a good one. Hey, you ain't going to tell me nothing. What? All right, go ahead, bro. I just had to do that. I just had to, brother. That's the, that's the life, man. And people say, I, you know, I, I, I don't knock a job, uh, Seth, because I had one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I, when you realize there's something better in life, why would you keep selling it for less? See, I remember working for somebody that I was more qualified than, but they made more money than I made. I remember training somebody that was making more than me. I wasn't comfortable with that. I never believed that I could go to work and work the hardest and get paid the least. I don't believe that that's the lifestyle. And that's, it's like, but that's a scheme. No, this real scheme is understanding that your CEO ain't going to never pay you enough to be his neighbor, let alone live in the zip code. When you understand that, that ain't the lifestyle. You making their family wealthy while you're making yours worry. I wasn't interested in that. I had to do something different to get a different result. So, I mean, I, 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 hey, I think that, you know, when we talk about the, the, the broke, listen, that's conditional. You can change that when you change your mind. You wake up and you speak that over your life. It's the law of attraction. I just wasn't interested in that. Oh uh, man, hold on, man. You know what? That, I, all right, y'all, listen. We had 40, 43 minutes or 44 minutes, and uh, I really do. Herm, tell me what you think, bro. You think we might have to do a, a part, a, a part two? To I think, I, yeah, I think we do because I mean, bro, yeah. listen, folks is going into a new year with an old mindset. Can you dig it? And it ain't good. You feel me? What the hell you think you go get new thinking old? Right. But go ahead, man. I'm, I'm going to give it to you. What you got? So, so I want to talk. I want to now get into a six figure ambition and what it's about. Right. We've been talking about generational wealth and, and what we need to do to get there. But we, we really didn't talk about like how, how your company really gets you there. Right. And is it really for everybody? Do you got to have the gift to gab, know how to talk to people? You know what I'm saying? Because we know everything is not for everybody. What does it take, like just for your co company specifically? I know there's other ways to build generational wealth, but speaking on your expertise, your company specifically, what does it take to be a part of that kind of company, and what is it exactly? Well, well, a couple of things is is that you got to be, you got to have a coachable mindset, right? We don't, we're not bosses around here. We coach you on how to go build a business that you own, that you control, that you build equity in, that can get passed down generationally. Right. To your children's children's children. And so you said it is not for everybody. Or do you have to have the gift of gab? Right. Um, 
I, you know, I think two ways about it. Like, 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 I don't see how how this wouldn't be for you, not our company, but the concepts. Because what we teach is people how to again have what we call leveraged income, money that doesn't require your time. How can I make money that doesn't require my time or touch? Listen, I don't know. It, 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 either one of you guys, if I, if I gave you a McDonald's restaurant, you the owner, would you take it? Would that be for you? I'm going to give you a McDonald's franchise. Would that be for you? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what, yeah, what, what, would, it. For you? what <laughs> would it not be for you? Like, hell, you ain't got to be the professional burger flipper. The I talked about that earlier. I'm not, I'm not going to sell you a McDonald's franchise so you could be an expert in flipping burgers. So even if we're in a financial institution and we do insurance, we do investments, and we do mortgages and things like that, we're not offering you our opportunity so you can be a great salesman. A salesperson is unemployed every day. That's scary. If you don't sell nothing, you don't make nothing. Your bills don't understand. Did nobody want to get no life insurance today? Your bills don't understand that. So I'm not interested in, in finding salespeople. I'm not interested in being a salesman. I'm interested in not being a distributor. I'm more interested in building a distribution. The owner of McDonald's ain't in the kitchen cooking your burger. He gets a check when the burger get cooked. And see, we've been taught to go to school, get an education, graduate, and get a good job. How about go to school, get an education, graduate, and own the damn business? The CEO of your company don't do what you do. He get paid because you do it. His income don't come when he do it. It comes when he caused it to be done. That's weird. How this ain't for everybody. You tell me. I'm going to get teach you how to build a business model that's going to pay you not based on your talent. That's the problem. See, you get paid based on their perceived. See, to your paycheck, it's based on what your boss feel like you work, the value that you bring to their company. You don't make a check increase your value. See, that's based on your talent. And talent alone ain't enough. You have to go put yourself in a position where your money is going to be made in, in, in regardless of your talent. I, I haven't worked in two weeks. My check still comes because it is predicated on a system like McDonald's, 2 all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, prickle lettuce on a sesame seed bun. It's a system. The system pays the Croc family. Ray Croc been dead since the 80s. Since the 80s. McDonald's ain't went nowhere because he didn't get paid on his talent or his skill set. He got paid on his systems. So how this ain't for you? The system now pays me eighty to $90,000 a month. Five years ago, I wasn't a part of it. I ain't sell that much damn insurance. I own a system. So you know what? <laughs> hey. You know what? Damn it. I'm going to say it. You know what I'm saying? I can dig it. I can dig it because I can dig it because I understand. Yes, sir. I understand that not everybody can dig it. I don't care even if you gave them the shuffle. You feel me? I don't care if you showed them where the X is. I don't care if you showed them where the X was. And Betty, you didn't even give them a shovel. You gave them a backhoe. Right. So now it's going to get, you know, they can dig as much as they want to. However, you said something that was very key. Individuals have to be coachable. See, so you can be the best coach, but it's a mindset that individuals need to be willing to break those barriers down. And I do believe her or uh, Larry, you let me know what you think about this. As a matter of fact, no, I'm going to give this to uh, Darman. What you think about this? The conditioned mindset on generational intelligence hey y'all said it look we got big mamas that probably had third grade education it's okay because we love big mama but she told you the best way and the best place to put your money was under your mattress hmm. money go do under the mattress big mama you feel me but guess what since you because you love big mama you don't want to question her now you telling your daughter to do the same thing all right. So, Darman, Darman, let me know. Give me your thoughts about generational thought process on financial literacy. Here's what I live by. If I won't change checking accounts with you, I don't want your financial advice, because if I do what you did, I'll make what you make. And I had a big mama to hit same conversation with me. Right. Same conversation. With me. Hey, don't believe in we, we want to put your money in a shoebox. Hey, the young lady tell me, say, I just put my money in the shoebox. I said, well, it's a great place to put it, man. But what happens if you die tomorrow? How much did you actually accumulate? See, when I met with Ronnell Burns, Ronnell Burns told me, hey, there is an avenue that I could take you down that's going to teach you how to make your money, make money, flip it in a different way. 
the mindset has to be changed. Again, it goes back to the mindset. They were only they only know what they were taught. And no one sat down and taught an education on financial literacy that you were actually engaged in. I just decided to be engaged in the conversation to bring myself to the position to where now I have a financial testimony that most people would die for. Right. But I had to listen to a conversation of a man that I would, number one, change checking accounts with. That I just looked at the mind. If I won't change checking accounts with you, I don't want your financial advice. Love it. OK, love it. Hey, Herm, I got this for you. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I think she's very, very skeptical of what we're talking about, man. I don't, I don't know. Like, like these kind of folks, Miss much respect, first of all, and thank you for watching. But she is very skeptical about what we're talking about here, and I'm pretty sure in y'all's line of y'all, y'all's uh, coaching, y'all run into people like this. Um, how, what would y'all say to her directly when when they when they come with uh, statements like these? Right. So there's a scripture. That says this, that my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. But then it goes on to say that knowledge came and they rejected knowledge. That's why we That's why they perish, because they rejected. Because the scripture said, I will not leave you ignorant to the devices of Satan. So let's address the pyramids, King. Number one, what well, is a pyramid? It's illegal. It's, as she said, primarily is a pyramid scheme. Pyramids, pyramids are illegal. Pyramids don't have a problem. So let you know that 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 not not the woman, but the message was ignorant, unlearned. It's unlearned, it's uneducated. It's pyramid is illegal and they don't have a product. We're talking about life insurance, mortgages, mutual funds. Right. We're a regulated company on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, how did we scheme the federal government for 44 years? The federal government <laughs> haven't figured out. It's a big ass pyramid, ain't it? But Miss Mary, <laughs> <laughs> the federal government didn't figure it out. In 44 years, the federal government didn't figure it out. But Miss Mary, she figured it out. We all figured it out. <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta sit back and, and you gotta check the sources. So if you Google, what does Ford say about Primerica? Let me answer you. You Google it, but let me tell you what Forbes said. Forbes says one of America's 50 most trustworthy companies. Forbes said that. What does Bill Gates, no, not Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, one of the highest paid men in the whole world, he counsels and consults the president about the physical economy. What does Warren Buffett say about Primerica? He said out of all the stocks in the world, this is one of the top three that you should get. Warren Buffett said that. What does AM Best, who ranks all financial service companies in the world, what does they say? A plus superior rating. A plus when only 15% of the financial industry have an A plus superior rating. And then the last thing, last thing, if you Google what company in North America have the most six and seven figure income earners, the most six and seven, that means more hundred thousand dollar earners, more million dollar earners than any other company in the world is going to bring you up a top 10 list. Seth, I got a question for you and I want to answer. So she just wants you to take a guess at this set. It's, it's a what company in North America got the most six and seven figure income earners. Mm -hmm. and it's going to pull up a top 10 list. I want you to take an educated guess on what company is number two on that list in the whole world. Number two. So if I was to take an educated guess, I would say if not watching this Google. Right. So Google ain't the one. You close though. Number two is Microsoft. Okay. Guess who's number one? Tell me who number one, brother. Prime America. America. <laughs> America. The man talked about Prime America got both six and most seven figure income earners than any other company. The pyramid scheme that she talking about. Hell, if this a pyramid, sign my ass up today. <laughs> scheme the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, yo. Hold on. <laughs> Scheme the hell out of me. Hey, listen, boy, y'all so damn silly. Hey, but I do appreciate it because, I mean, you think about it. You think about it. there are individuals that are skeptic. I mean, based off of, hey, just look at the world that we're in, right? So no shade, Miss Mary, uh, because there's individuals that that are motivated just to take your bread, not to help you. You feel me? People are motivated to do that. So there are individuals that are out there looking for people that want to get rich quick. 
You understand? So no, no, we can dig that. We do dig that. So, you know, just, you know, just poking fun. But at the same time, there's individuals that look like us or that don't look like us. But it's not about what you look like. It's about what you think like. What's your spending habits? Right. What's your routines? What's your daily routines? Like, what are you doing right now that you can change? What's your daily habits? Hey, so um, Larry, brother, I want to want to give it back to you, man. Whew. Oh, I got to take a deep breath, man. These guys are dropping bombs over here on us, man. <laughs> Listen, that was a good question. That was one of the points that I was going to hit on. It's like this whole pyramid scheme because that's part of our culture, right? When I reach out and I say, hey, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. I need you to come look at this. The first thing folks say is that pyramid scheme because there are some schemes out there. Like, let's keep it honest. There are some schemes out there. That's, I forget uh, what that was, was, that the, money dollar scheme. Too, some, too, my, too, even too. my family kind of too, gave me a too. part of yeah, 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 whatever it was, you know, so so I understand the skepticism. I really do. And that's why I was going on when I was talking earlier about that education piece. Like it is important for us to get educated and it's hard to get folks in the room to get educated because they're already skeptical before they walk in the room. So how do you break that barrier? You know, it's like, do I pull up in the Maserati to get your attention? But that's for the younger generation. How do I get these older folks that are in their 40s and 50s and 60s? They kind of understand the importance of this, you know, so. I guess my question to you guys is the balance. Like, how do we break that myth of this pyramid scheme don't and break folks out to just rob you blind? Okay. That, that's never going to be broken. It, it didn't come overnight. It ain't going to leave overnight. You just got to be consistent. And the biggest challenge that most people have in building the business, whether it's Prime America, Six Figure Ambition, within the vision of Prime America uh, in, 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 in the Midwest, but it doesn't matter about that. You don't break the myth. You just continue. Most people quit. Most people get hit with a little adversity or somebody said this or somebody said that and they go tuck their tail and they give up. You got to just stay consistent. Hell, Martin Luther King was getting sprayed with water hose. He believed in his message and he believed in his method. And because he believed in his message and he never gave up on his method or his message, we see change today. Right? That's the Bible said, be not weary and well doing because in due season, you're going to reap if you don't faint. Most people ain't got, they faint, they quit, they give up. So people going to say what they're going to say. Hell, they talked about Jesus. He didn't stop fighting. He didn't stop pushing. So the bearer is, this is how I think. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. When I walked the door, my door, and he seen my little primary button, you know what he said? I don't need no insurance. I don't need to make no extra nothing. I'm good. That's what he said to me. But I still went in his house. I still gave him a presentation. I showed him a different way he should buy term insurance and invest money in a mutual fund. And when I sat down and had the conversation with him, he said, damn, Ronnell, that makes sense. And he switched over his life insurance policy that night. He's now investing money, six figures in his investment account because I showed up. What concern that he told me at the door, I don't need no part time, nothing. I seen that. We told me I seen that rodeo before, Prime America. You, 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 you heard the right message the wrong way. That's right. So let me give it to you like it's supposed to go. Listen, I've been to the Walmart on West Florence, and I also been to the Walmart in Chesterfield. Two different experiences. Y'all, hey. Let me educate you, young man. And I changed his life because I didn't give up because he said I seen that rodeo before. Say what you want. I believe what I believe. I ain't going nowhere. You gonna right. you gonna you gonna you gonna join me or die, cause I ain't going nowhere. At some point you're gonna come around. I'm gonna get you. One of my troops gonna get you. We ain't going nowhere. Hey, okay, Darman. So, brother, listen, we about we close to that time, ladies and gentlemen. If y'all digging this, just give us y'all. Let us know that this is some good information for y'all, right? Let us know. Just type it in the chats, right? Thumbs up and all that, because I think we're gonna have to do this a, a part two, right? Because we're on borrowed time, because we value your time. But listen, Darman, man, if you can let individuals know, man, what do y'all have going on in the future? Right. How do they what do you got going on in the future so individuals can can contact y'all? Well, I mean, you know what? I think that's actually a, a better question for Ronell since he actually generate that platform uh, set. OK. For, for things. So, yeah, we'll pass that one back to Ronell. Right, go ahead, Ronell. My bad. Go ahead. So, so tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, you visit www.sixfigurea.com. Six, the number six figure, the letter a dot com, six figure dot com and hit join next meeting. And when you hit join next meeting, it's going to ask you for a password. That password is our time because that's exactly what it is. It's our time. Sixfigure8.com, 
7 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to talk about financial concepts and how to create leverage income for generational wealth. 7 p.m. www.sixfigurea.com. The number six and the letter A. www.sixfigurea.com. 7 o'clock password, our time, because that's exactly what it is. Whew. Yo, yo. <laughs> All right. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> y'all, hopefully y'all dig this. Hopefully y'all y'all dig this because this is th this is about time. All right. This is this is a good time. Herm, what you think, bro? Hey, first and foremost, I want to thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Uh, I remember Larry was talking about it and I was one of those. Are you going to this pyramid scheme? There's Airborne or something else coming at me once once again. But uh, man, I mean, what you talked about was was insightful and i i want to i want more i definitely want more information uh so, and i the people were feeling it you had your soldiers in the comments you know we appreciate all of them i even appreciate my my ignorant homeboy bill let me tell bill something real quick wait no no no, no hold on let me tell him something real fast bill <laughs> bill i could lose weight man you still be ugly as hell you know what I'm <laughs> i just gotta let you know that player you know what i mean but uh anyway Hey, hey, so here we were talking boss moves, and now we're going. Hey, man, hey, I, hey, I got to come at him back, dog. No. You, no, you, you put it on the big screen. I did it by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, check it out. Hey, we can't be Gucci Mane after being bo making boss moves, right? Hey, but look, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all could dig this, hey, brother, uh, Ronnell and Darmont, yo, we appreciate y'all being on. We got individuals that want to ask you questions. We got individuals that's in the military thinking about changing that thought mindset, right? I was one of them. Yeah. So when you're conditioned, you need something else, right? Yeah. You need something else. You need another sense of uh, community and also another way of thinking. So I encourage you to go back into our thread and just answer questions, right? And, and connect with individuals. Hey, and what do y'all think? Y'all think about coming back? Y'all good with that coming back again? I'm all good with it. How to educate our community. We love to do it. That's all it. right. I hear from you. Darmon, what you think, brother? Man, likewise, man. This is a passion of mine, man. And we love to spread the message, man, because we believe it's something that everybody definitely needs to hear. Right on. Okay. Well, look, y'all, without further ado, I want y'all to enjoy y'all week and, and keep your thought mindset on. And hey, and if listen, look, if you got to go in and and you, tomorrow you're about to go get pimped, even if it's via Zoom. Right on. Look good doing it. But what I want you to do is think forward think afterwards because it's the inevitable your uniform or whatever the case is will come off but you want to be happy all right and so until then we'll holla at y'all on the flip flop later <laughs>